Hi there guys, welcome to another episode as part of our Elbow Radiology series. Today we'll be focusing on the clinical and radiological relevance of the mnemonic CRITOL when interpreting a pediatric elbow x-ray. So specifically what we'll be covering in terms of our learning objectives is first and foremost introducing you to the ossification centers of the elbow uh, in specifically looking at them radiologically. Secondly, to introduce the concept of CRITOL and why it's relevant. And then thirdly, put it into action through a clinical case that we posted on our Facebook group. So let's start with the elbow ossification centers. So the key fundamental step to be aware of is this mnemonic known as CRITOL. Some centers use CRITO with an E at the end instead of an L. But fundamentally, what it stands for is C, stands for capitellum, R, radial head, I, internal or medial epicondyle, T for trochlea, O for electronon, and L for lateral epicondyle, or if it's an E, for when you use crito, it's external epicondyle. But fundamentally, what they represent is the order in which the ossification centers appear. And this sequence is key. Specifically, the capitellum is first, typically at the age of one years. Thereafter, it's the radial head around three years. Then it's the internal or medial epicondyle at five years, the trochlea at seven years on average, the electronon at nine years on average, and then lastly, at around 11 years of age, it is the lateral or external epicondyle. Like I said, don't worry specifically about the years. These are varied and the averages I've presented on the screen to you. What's key is the order. It goes in this specific order of capitellum first, radial head, internal medial epicondyle, trochlea, electronon, and then finally the external or lateral epicondyle. And just to hammer in the point, sequence is key. Like I said, don't get fixated with the ages. Those are just average ages and they can vary. But the sequence cannot. So it must go capitellum or capitulum, radial head, internal or medial epicondyle, trochlea, electronon, and then finally lateral or external epicondyle. Okay, that is the sequence in which the ossification centers must appear. So now that we've understood the purpose and the relevance uh, clinically and radiologically of CRITOL, let's put it into action with a clinical case. Okay, so let's put it into a case. This is a case that we posted on our Facebook group. If you want to join, by all means, please do so. Just search for Radcast Academy. So we've got a 13-year-old, okay? That's quite key. Remember that age. He was being play playing football, pushed onto the floor, heard something pop, turned up to A&E, probably an elbow dislocation, nice A&E doctors put it back together. He's a bit sore, says it still hurts when he moves, but of course it's probably nothing, so he's been sent home with, of course, with a nice little lollipop, which I'm sure we'd all like to have right now. You're the brand spanking new ST1 radiologist, the first year radiology resident or the first year radiology registrar if you're training in the UK. You've been asked to review the x-rays from A&E. Lo and behold, Wally's post-elbow reduction A&Es have popped up and he, the consultant has asked you to look at them and report if there's anything sinister. So let's have a look. So here are Wally's left elbow x-rays. On the left side of your screen, you've got his frontal view. On the right side of your screen, you've got his lateral view. And remember, Wally is 13 years old. So as per Kreitel, he should have all of his ossification centers. But remember, it's not much about the age because that varies. It's the specific order in which the ossification centers appear. One cannot appear without the prior one already forming. So let's put that into action. So let's start off by looking for the capitulum, C. And here it is, this is the capitulum or capitellum, whatever you like to say, on the frontal view. And if we look on the lateral view, you've got the ossification center right here. So capitulum, tick. Now, next should be the radial head. So if we look at the, for the radial head, once again, we've got it here. So radial head is there, and if we look on the lateral view, radial head is also there. So, tick. Next, internal or medial epicondyle. So we should be, what? Where is it? Something should be here, where typically 
the medial epicondyle is. And if we look on the uh, lateral, it should be around here. And I'm a bit worried that this is quite a bit of a regular border. Okay, so let's park that. We've got a case of a missing internal or medial epicondyle. Let's look for the rest or the rest there. So T is for trochlea. And yep, I can see the trochlea ossification center here. And here it is on the lateral view. Okay, so we've got the trochlea and we're still missing the medial epicondyle. O, alecranon. Typically, it's quite difficult to see on the frontal view, but if you look on the lateral, lo and behold, it's there in all its glory. So we've got the alecranon ossification center. And finally, he should have a lateral or external epicondyle. So once again, here it is in all its glory. So that's fine. Often you can't really see it on a actual lateral view. It's better seen on a frontal view. So this doesn't add up. We don't have a medial or internal epicondyle, yet we've got everything else. So we need to go hunting for this. And if you haven't seen it already, what is this blob here? What is this piece of bone just randomly sat within the joint? Okay, and if you look on the lateral, once again, there's this quite nicely shaped uh, bone just lying within the joint. And if you look, this is actually the medial epicondyle ossification center, and it's actually avulsed, okay? So once again, looking at Kreitel, you should be thinking, okay, where is this internal epicondyle? Where is this medial epicondyle? And when you look at the rest of the x-ray, you can see that there is actually a medial epicondyle avulsion. So this was a case of medial epicondyle avulsion, which was quite easily picked up when you apply the principles of Kreitel, in the sense that these ossification centers appear sequentially in a chronological order, and one cannot appear without the other being formed, okay? So if one is missing, but the more uh, later developed ossification centers are there, then you need to go hunting for the missing ossification center on your x-ray. So let's just quickly recap on what we've covered in this episode. We've covered the radiological appearances of the ossification centers of the elbow. We've outlined the radiological meaning and clinical relevance of the Kreitel criteria, specifically focusing on the sequential appearance of the ossification centers. And we've applied our knowledge of Kreitel in a clinical case of a medial epicondyle avulsion. So it was awesome for you guys to tune into this episode. By all means, please check out the rest of our resources. Just find us on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram by just looking for Radcast Academy. If you like these type of cases, please jump onto our Facebook group, Radcast Academy, where we post these things regularly. If you've got any questions or unsure about anything, by all means, we'd love to hear from you. Just send us an email at hello at radcast.co.uk, and we'll see you in the next episode.